I was born in Mata Hospital. And I came out of my mother's womb. Yay! I'm born. Then, there's another guy looking at me. Like, what? Kumbe, I was a twin. Another guy was born five minutes before me. Doesn't that suck? He sucked out my glory. And um, that was a story of the rest of my life. So we were twins, Dennis and Eric. I heard a family rumor that actually my name was not supposed to be Dennis. On baptism, my mom would always carry one guy on the left, the other guy on the right. But she was handing them over to the priest. Her left was his right, and her right was his left. <laughs> so I'm stuck with the name Dennis for the rest of my life. No fault of mine, but that was my experience of twinning. And how it impacted the rest of my life. In school, we had, we were these two little boys with big ears and size six feet. I was like this tall with Cockney accents. Of course, I was a target for bullying. We both were. Going into our teenage lives, again, twinning. It has its pros and it has its cons. So one day, my brother says, I have a problem. I'm like, what? He says, I need to dump Patricia. I'm like, yeah, so? He's like, I want you to do it for me. I'm like, what? Like, she doesn't know the difference. Just act like you're me. I looked, I'm telling you, he was my twin brother, best friend, and my frenemy. I said, okay. And I met Patricia. And they said, babe, you know, <laughs> it's not about you. <laughs> I don't even know the chick. Yeah, it's me, but you know, I think we need to, you know, take some time out. And I did that for my bro. It got worse growing up in the hood. We grew up in Buruburu. So I'd be beaten up because he took somebody's girlfriend. He'd be beaten up because, yeah, vice versa. And sometimes, if you're a really good bully, just beat both of us up. <laughs> so at least, yeah, 50%. You can't go wrong, right? So again, it's about identity. Because I was never me as me. I was just one of a unit, which wasn't bad. It had its pros and cons. Then we graduated and became grown-ups. And now we had jobs. While working, I became a marketing manager in a car company. And he was the creative manager at Capital FM. And um, I briefed my ad agency because I wanted a campaign. <sighs> this guy went to Capital FM and demanded he will only brief the head of creative. So this guy leaves my office, walks into Eric's office, and the guy's like, what is going on here? <laughs> the guy who just briefed me is the guy that I'm briefing. So, he calls my boss to say, dude, there's a serious problem here. Your guy is moonlighting. 
And my boss promptly wrote me my firing letter. Yeah. I was fired that night by the time I laid my bed to rest. So the next day, I come to the office, and I'm told, yeah, yeah, dude, you've been fired. You can't have two jobs. I'm like, you guys, when you're interviewing me, did you ask me if I have a twin? So the campaign went on. I was unfired, and we fired the ad agency. Not because of lack of competency, but because the guy was a snitch. So what if I was moonlighting? <laughs> and we competed with each other and uh, ended up working at Capital FM. And I was brought in as head of marketing while he was head of creative, which was great. And we were a great tag team, and we worked well together. Until the time my brother was poached, and he went to Ogilvy. The years went on, and we found ourselves on opposing sides on each advertising campaign. Every time someone would hire me, the opposing side would hire him. which was cool. After like 20 years of fighting each other, we decided, you know what, let's start our own company. So we created our entity called Mwema. And it was good because it was the best of both worlds because we had similar skills, so we could multitask better than most people. And uh, we killed it because we were a great tag team. And then at some point, we weren't. And he started becoming reclusive, standoffish, mood swings. And I'd ask him, um, dude, what's going on? And he wouldn't answer. A lot of times, his phone was off. Then he called me one day and said, OK. Uh, dude, I have cancer. Um, I was like, what? I was like, yeah. I was like, okay, um, yeah, we can, we, we can deal with this. Yeah, yeah, cool. So, let's work on chemotherapy, because now you're on panic mode. And just before he was scheduled for his chemotherapy, the guy went down. And his health declined. All of a sudden, I'm visiting him at ICU. Every single day. And every other day, because I'm trying to keep our company afloat and my brother alive. And I watched him die in front of me. I've never seen a human being die and their lights go out right there. It was the most shocking moment of my life. And my my life just fell apart. What followed then was the total destruction of me, and I, I lost everything. And um, the sequence of events went from shock to sadness to depression, substance abuse, uh, I stopped working. I couldn't even wake up in the morning, and I couldn't do anything. Um, I didn't want to talk to anybody because I was tired, tired of hearing Pole, because Pole doesn't help me. I couldn't talk to any client. I had no creative acumen, no nothing. And I slid 
and I had no time for anybody or anything or even time for myself. So I was battling against the odds. Um, eventually, I sought therapy. And what I learned is everybody needs somebody. And to do that, just speak to somebody. And I learned the power of getting the message out there. So I had to climb back. I revamped our company, Wema. We're doing still creative, consultancy, advertising, production, agriculture, um, even fashion. Um, I have Zofia Fashions, who dressed me. I hope I look all right. And that is how I made it through. But at the same time, I said, everybody needs somebody. So when I'm on this stage, I'm going to thank my neighbors who put up with my crap when I was dealing with my ups and downs. Also thank my patient landlord. I swear the check is in the mail. <laughs> Didn't I come? I thank the Raptor Road business community who support me and the Nairobi School Patch guys who supported me. Sue Moriah of BSD and my bro-in-law, Mene Kalinga, both of whom were teaching me about patience in corporate. I thank my mother who's teaching me how to think like a villager and be humble. I thank Dr. Jean Kagia, who put me on her campaign because we're fighting incest in Kenya. And my other guy, blind guy, Mr. Julius. And this blind guy brought me into the fight to enable and see how I can support the disabled. So while I'm doing that, I'll come back to all of you. This is my story, and the odds were stacked up against me. And how you can help somebody else pick up their phone call, answer their text, because there's somebody who the odds are stacked against them. Thank you.